John, thanks for coming tonight. It's a pleasure. Really Come back home. It. Exactly. <coughs> You're neck of the woods. Mm. We are in a bind in Australia on climate change. We cannot get action happening on either party. Uh, we're lacking in leadership. The rest of the world is moving fast. What do you think Australia should do? Well, change the government. <laughs> Both sides. <laughs> I think the uh, idea of voices for Wentworth, uh, supporting independence in a lot of seats, there are a lot of voice movements around different seats may make a difference. Um, you know, the, it, the two parties are pretty close and not too, well, not too different, particularly on climate these days. So I think that uh, it's possible to see a number of independents win at the next election yeah. and they could actually hold the balance of power in both houses. Wow. And then there's a, an, under a loose sort of umbrella on the big issues like climate and integrity and so on, they could say, you, you know, we'll only support good government if you... <laughs> You know, if you put up rubbish, we'll just ignore it. We won't pass it through the parliament. Just so start governing, and I think that might improve governance. And on things like climate, I mean, that's about a, what we will take to drive the either of the two parties, which seem to be shell shocked. I don't know why. Shell John, do you think the two parties, either side, offers us any good option on climate change? Not at all. Now, I mean, it's almost a race to the bottom. You can be tougher on uh, on climate and do more for the coal industry or the fossil fuel lobby more broadly. So, no, I mean, they've had a unique opportunity. The opposition's had a unique opportunity to differentiate their product. They backed off to where they were at the last election. Uh, and, of course, uh, Morrison uh, doesn't want to do anything. God will fix it. You know, we don't need to worry about climate. Right. And do you think, John... Opportunity-wise, from an economic point of view, what are we missing out on by not acting? Well, I, I go back to when I started in this debate in the late 80s, early 90s. We had a party position, 20% carbon emissions by the year 2000 off a 1990 base. If we'd done that each decade since, we'd be at less than half our Paris commitments already uh, in 2020. And um, we would have had hundreds of thousands of new jobs and billions of dollars of growth and investment. So we've squandered that opportunity. And all but for a few years over that entire 30 year period, has there been any sort of agreement between the two major parties? I mean, I guess um, when Howard and, uh, and Rudd agreed on an emissions trading scheme in 2007, they stepped forward. And of course, Gillard pushed through a carbon price for a while, and that worked to reduce emissions. But uh, from that, it's just been you know, point scoring, blame shifting, and no progress. John, do you think, uh, what can we do on a climate that would really make a difference for Australia, given that our, both our parties seem to be uh, locked up and unable to act? Well, I think the only hope we've got is that businesses and households and key institutions lead the debate. When there's a vacuum at the political level, I mean, there's so much more that those sectors can do, and uh, in many cases they are.